Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are going to be talking about one of those behind the scenes technology that powers many games, especially if you're into online fighting games, uh, that has just been open sourced and made available free. And we're talking about GGPO and if you've played Injustice 2 or Skullgirls or Marvel vs. Capcom Online, you have used code powered by GGPO. Now the reason why we're talking about it is Tony Cannon, the creator of it, known as Alt or at P-O-N-D-3-R just tweeted this yesterday that GGPO has a new home and it is now available under the MIT license. Get it here. So this is the GGPO Rollback Network SDK. We're going to look at exactly what that means. Now, first off, we're going to head on over to the GitHub page. I will, of course, link all of these links down below. Uh, as you can see, it is on GitHub. However, uh, it is under the MIT license. The code is all available right here. The code itself is for Visual Studio 2019. Uh, it is mostly um, C++ code, as you can see right there. Um, yeah, pretty straightforward. Now, there's a description here. I'm going to skip over that because there's a better description on ggpo.net. Again, I will toss all of the relevant links that you need down below, so don't worry about keeping up that way. So first off, here we are on ggpo.net. Uh, this is where they describe what ggpo is all about. This is created for originally Twitch-style fighting games. Um, and how does it work? And rollback networking is designed to integrate into a fully deterministic peer-to-peer -peer engine. With full determinism, the game is guaranteed to play out the same way on all players' computers if we simply feed them the same inputs. One way to achieve this is to exchange um, inputs for all players over the network, only executing a frame of gameplay logic when all players have received all input from their peers. This often results in sluggish, unresponsive uh, gameplay. The longer it takes to get inputs over the network, the slower the game becomes. So that is the problem we're trying to solve when you're playing a game and it's waiting for the input to come in from, you know, that guy out in Australia um, to your connection in Vermont. That can take three, four hundred milliseconds and three, four hundred milliseconds to wait for a key press to come in is an eternity. So your game is just going to chug, 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 chug. And so the solution here that they've proposed is rollback networking. Uh, game logic is allowed to proceed with just the inputs from the local player. So your local machine um, uses its own input and then what happens is remote inputs have not yet arrived when it's time to execute a frame the networking code just basically guesses what the remote player was going to do based on what they've done in the past uh, since there's no waiting the game feels just as responsive as it does offline when those inputs finally arrive over the network they can be compared to the ones that were predicted earlier if they differ the game can be re-simulated from the point of divergence to the current visible frame um, and GGPO actually takes care of a lot of the low-level stuff here for you. So as long as your game um, can take a game state, load it back up, and execute a frame without rendering, GGPO can take care of the rest of the logic for you. Now, the nice thing is, since this is MIT licensed, this can be slotted into any game right now. So if your game needs to have peer-to-peer -peer multiplayer networking with a very responsive uh, network response. Uh, that, that was a very run on sentence, but you can just slot this in and use it the same way as if you're running an open source game engine, such as the Godot engine, you could just implement this code tomorrow if it, you know, meets your needs and requirements and your platforms, etc. So this is definitely a cool development. Now there is a bit more uh, of a depth in depth definition. So they've got a couple of links to articles about it. And one of the most interesting ones is this one here by game developer magazine, may you rest in peace. And here we Go, and it kind of does a bit more of a, an in-depth uh, look at what GGPO was all about and how it solved things. So here's what they were talking about the first time. you got local input, local input, local input, local input, and then you've got remote input coming in. After all of the inputs have come in, so this could be multiple inputs having to come in, once you've got everything, then you could update the game state and move on. Using ggpo.net, what you're doing is getting local input and then predicting what the remote input's going to be and updating game state. Local input there local input there local input there now what happens is at that fourth frame here you've got um the uh in the the remote input comes in and now what it'll do is validate to see if they were actually right so you see in this particular graphic uh they've done the same thing and they've come back here and they've done a, a verification oh nope darn we're not right and then we kind of just do a rollback and then keep going from there but now we use the input from the remote character of uh, the remote player as opposed to our predicted version so what you're essentially doing using this algorithm is you're trading um accuracy for responsiveness so you're going to be wrong every once in a while but 
you're going to always be smooth because you're predicting what the other player is going to do as opposed to waiting for them. And there's a really good example of how this works. Now, the cool thing here is this is a, a standard fighting move that you've got of Ryu doing a roundhouse kick. And you've actually only got these 12 active frames during the roundhouse kick. And then you've got startup and then you've got recovery from after the roundhouse kick. And those are dead frames. When you're in startup or recovery mode, the player can't send input because your character is already committed to a move. And this is where it can start doing its its synchronization and, and you know, um, GGPO will then handle the rollback as best as possible in these dead frames so it won't impact the gameplay. So it's not like it's just wrong and, oh, we got to fix this. You've got this area of active frames which are critical to get it right, but it's here and here that it can do some of its rollback stuff and you as a player will never notice the lack of accuracy. And there's a lot more in-depth details of what, what's going on here, but I think there's a really good example at the bottom of this article about why um, GGPO is such a good idea versus waiting for all the inputs to come in. Now again, if you wait for all the inputs to come in before acting on it, you're going to be 100% accurate, but you're going to have issues. And it says it perfectly down here. The, quali the quality of the prediction algorithm is a function of the frequency and severity of the rendering glitches caused by a misprediction. For example, in a game of Pong, a misprediction will cause the opponent's paddle to jump to a new position on the screen. Getting the paddle position uh, wrong is important, of course. I think that might be reversed wording, but getting the paddle position right is important, of course. Uh, but an algorithm that is always wrong, but only off by a few pixels, is better than one that is only wrong 10% of the time, but the opponent's paddle to jump a quarter of the screen as a result. And there's, you, you've probably played games with poor networking code, and it just yanks you out of the immersiveness. So what this is saying is basically, hey, this algorithm might be wrong all the time, but it's only like slightly wrong. It's a very, very small amount of wrongness, and your players won't potentially notice it, or hopefully won't notice it. Whereas if that other algorithm is wrong, you know, one time out of 10, but it's really wrong, your players are always going to notice it. And that's kind of the underlying idea behind GGPO. Now, when we started this, I said it was used in several games. And here we are, we're on the uh, Wikipedia page for GGPO, and you can see some of those games. Final Fight, Street Fighter 3, Third Strike Online Edition, Skullgirls, Marvel vs. Capcom Origins, Darkstalker Resurrection, Dungeons & Dragons, Chronicles of Mystera, um, Dive Kit, Killer Instinct, uh, Brahalla, Rising Thunder, Injustice 2. So these are definitely games you've heard of if you are into uh, fighters or beat em up style games. So this is not an untested library by any means whatsoever. So really, this announcement that it is now MIT licensed and available for everyone, that is very, very cool. And that was cool of you, Tony Cannon, uh, or Cannon, I guess it's Cannon, Tony Cannon for making that uh, actually happen. So very cool. Um, so if you are working on netcode and you want to do, you know, uh, the, the way that a lot of fighting games implement things, you now have this new option, GGPO, or, uh, once again, I always forget the acronym, Good Game, Peace Out. Again, not the most professional sounding name you've ever heard, but it definitely has a resume that backs it up. So uh, hopefully we start seeing this adopted by more games. I know a lot of people kind of like this predictive style networking, especially when they look at... Um, a lot of the Japanese style games where if you play them outside of Japan where the you know in Japan I think they've got really solid networking and they're packed very close together so good latency code isn't really a big deal but the rest of the world it really shows up in their game so there's all kinds of people especially if you go back to this tweet itself there are all kinds of people down here basically saying Arc Systems, please use this, and so on. Like, various different games out there, Guilty Gear, all of these games, they want them to implement this predictive style of networking. And it really does work well when you've got an inferior connection. Now, if you've got a perfect, like if you're um, all fiber optic and really close to each other, it may not be the perfect implementation. But the most of the rest of the world, we don't have perfect interconnection, internet connections. Lag and latency happen all the time. And that's why people are screaming out for something like GPP, GGPO. So anyways, that is it. Let me know what you think. If you're developed a fighting game or a networking code or anything like this, is this of interest to you? Would you love to see something like this implemented into uh, Gitto or other open source game engines? Uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.